Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today we got another film review on Coach Cove's B-Ball Breakdowns. As you can see, we've moved studios, and I'm hoping that a larger TV will help you guys see the screen a little bit better. First game we got is a Big East matchup, uh, Villanova and Xavier. Coming into this one, uh, Villanova was 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games. They lost to Xavier earlier in the season on January 7th in an 88-80 to 80 point affair. Xavier's coming in, they've been playing some close games lately. They had a 2-point win versus Providence, a 2-point loss to Butler on February 10th, and then a 1-point loss to Marquette, who they trail in the Big East standings uh, last Wednesday. Two biggest guys on the court for them are Cam Whitmore and Eric Dixon. We'll take a look at them. Whitmore's a freshman. He's 6'7", 232. Uh, Dixon's a 6'8", 255 senior, number 43. I'm sorry, he's a junior. Uh, they do lead the country in assists per game. They average over 20 assists per game, the only team in the country to do so. They also shoot it well behind the three-point line, a 39.4% clip. Soli Bohm, Adam Kunkel, Colby Jones, Desmond Claude, they all stroke it. They all spray it from behind the three-point line. 71% from the free throw line, 30, 13 turnovers a game. Like I said, 20.3 assists, and they grabbed 37 boards. So let's just get into this highlight. Uh, we got a close game here late at Xavier. Villanova looking to steal one on the road. Villanova's head coach is in his first year. He's replacing the great Jay Wright at Villanova. This is a big opportunity for him to grab a good road win and really boost his resume. So on this first possession, Villanova's going to have it, and we're going to see uh, – Moore and Daniels. Justin Moore, number five, is going to have the ball at the top, and he gets a screen from uh, Daniels. It starts up here. He fights through the ball screen, and then Nunes is on the midline. He comes and doubles it, but he has to get back because Dixon is cutting. There comes Dixon right to the hoop, so Nunes has to get back. But Colby Jones, again, great job staying in front, and he gets a hand on the ball. So it turns into a fast break look for Xavier, and like I said, they get 20 assists per game, and that's a good look to Kunkel. Um, from Desmond Claude using the bounce pass into the lane. Kunkel just shuffles his feet. So Xavier blows their opportunity to tie the game. That's Cam Whitmore, that 6'7 freshman right here, affecting that play, making Kunkel think about it just a little bit too much. So on this Nova possession, it starts off with a ball screen from Dixon, but Daniels right here, number 14 in blue, is also setting one on Dixon's guy, none. So Dixon's going to go to the hoop. Daniels is coming to pop. We get a swing look. And, again, Colby Jones uses his feet to stay in front. He plays great individual defense. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Late games in March, these close games, are going to come down to what a guy can do guarding the ball when it's just mano a mano with a guy in front of you. What can you do to stop the dribble drive and the penetration and stop an offense from developing a good look? Colby Jones has done that twice on two big possessions here late. So it goes back up to Moore. And Moore just rises up and hits a big shot. That's a huge shot for Justin Moore. Um, it's a broken play. We really got nothing going. Colby Jones, like I said, using good hands, good feet. The kick out is almost a turnover. And with 10 on the clock, Moore just rises up and hits a big shot on the road to put him up five. On this Xavier possession, it's for Adam Kunkel. So Kunkel's going to start on this opposite block. Soli Boom right here, number zero in gray. He's their leading scorer. He's averaging 16. Game. He's shooting it uh, 41% behind the line and 86 from the free throw line. He's one of the best scorers in the nation. But Kunkel's coming up off a couple screens here. Nunch hits this guy first, and then we get another hit right here. Nunch actually follows up and hits him with another ball screen. He just comes right up. He knows Kunkel can shoot it, so he's got to hedge hard and take away that pull-up three because uh, Moore is stuck behind the screen right here. But Kunkel's a lot smaller than uh Daniel Dixon, and he just uses his size and his speed to go right around him and get right to the hoop. A really good take and a really good finish there from Kunkel. Good hard hedge by Dixon, just slow feet. On this possession, it's Moore and Dixon. They're trying to get a switch, and when you're trying to get a switch to a bigger guy, you're coming off the screen, and you got to attack Nunch so that he can't get back to the help on Dixon. Um, they try to get a switch, but it's just... It's good defense from Jones. He's able to stay in position, so Nunn's is able to get back to his man. But they're still looking for the switch. This time, Moore attacks Nunn a little bit more. It makes him have to play defense. So now the bounce pass to Dixon across the lane is open. But we end up getting a switch, which is good enough. So now Dixon's got a lot smaller defender on him, 
and we get the ball to him on a good block position. He shuffles his feet too. We get a travel call on Xavier, so get a travel call on Villanova rather. So score stays the same. It's good. It's another great defensive possession from Colby Jones. He's undersized here, but he stays in decent position enough to get a travel call. So Villanova's up three now, and like I said, individual defensive possession. This is great defense from Villanova. Great ball pressure the entire possession. We're switching early. We get a switch here. It's a hard help, hard help. He's over the screen here. We're fighting through it, fighting through it here. We're going to get another screen right here. We get a switch. So now we have Moore being guarded. Moore is guarding a much larger defender. It's a seven-footer, Jack Nunch down here. Um, and like I said in the previous possession, when you have a switch and you want to get a look into the block, you have to make this guy guard you. Boom has to go at Dixon here so that he doesn't have a chance to go back and help and switch back and forth. So that's what happens. Boom does go at Dixon. He kicks it to Kunkel, and Kunkel goes right in the lane and he takes a tough shot. We have Nunge low. He's, he, if you just give him an extra couple seconds, let Boom go through. Let Nunge get position. Yeah, eight on the clock. We could probably get it in and get a quick turn and look at the hoop. Right. Kumble goes right at the hoop, and he takes a difficult shot. Goes out of bounds off Colby Jones. It's a broken possession that doesn't result in anything positive for Xavier. So Xavier's going to bring the pressure on this one, trying to speed up Villanova, force him into a mistake, force him into an early shot. we got to extend the game and <laughs> get as many possessions as we can. So Moore's going to go right at Claude right here, Desmond Claude. He just dribbles right at him. Um, he gets deep, and he draws a second defender in Jack Nunge. So we're going to have someone open on the perimeter um, for the block. There's two defenders guarding one right now. So, Bohm, or I'm sorry, Justin Moore, he's just a little bit too deep. And where he picks up his dribble is just not in a good spot. He's stuck at this point. So he's looking to take it. But Kunkel's playing good ball pressure defense. He gets a tip, and Boom is there to make the steal. And it turns into a foul. So now Xavier gets to go to the line with a chance to make it a one possession game, a one point game, and not even take any time off the clock. Boom is going to hit both his free throws. Noah brings it up and they burn a timeout. They end up burning another timeout on this trap. This one finally goes into Dixon after about four and a half seconds. And uh, it's just a really slow developing offensive possession. They got 20 on the clock, there's a 10 second differential. And they want to waste as much time as they can. But the problem is Xavier does a really good job playing defense right here. You can see uh, Desmond Claude helps out just enough right here. He gives him just enough heart of the hedge on Justin Moore to allow Colby Jones to have enough time to get back to the block and cut off the dribble. Now what that does is it allows Jack Nunn to stay home on this midline. And he doesn't have to help up as much because Colby Jones is able to get back and cut off that dribble. So he's able to just stay in here and continue clogging up that lane. If this doesn't happen, if Claude doesn't make this bump and Jones isn't able to get to the block to cut him off, Jones, or Claude forces Moore just far enough away from the hoop to allow Jones to get back. But if that action doesn't happen and uh, Boom, or I'm sorry, Moore is able to get to the rim, then Jack Nunch has to step up, and all of a sudden we're beat because Dixon coming to the hoop. We gotta have one of these two guys help. But that's not what happens. Colby cuts him off, and Nunch stays home. So now we got seven seconds to get a good look up in a one-point game. And Dixon on the three-point line is not what we want one-on-one. -on -one. He gets in the lane, but he travels again. So now Xavier's going to have a shot to win the game. They got 11 seconds. They're at home, and they're down one. And what they do is they go right to Silly Hoop. They go to their best player, the guy that is one of the best scorers in the country, like I said, averaging close to 17 points a game. He takes the majority of their shots. And uh, this one, well, we'll just watch that. It's a ball screen here. Boom goes right at the taller defender, and it's another tough look. Similar to the Kunkel look, you just leave off your feet, and you don't get a good look at the shot. You're just flicking it up. It's not a strong take. It's not a strong take off two feet. It's off one foot with a guy directly in your shooting path. I would love to see Boom, with eight seconds to go, take a jump stop here and try and get a better look. 
You get a scrum for the ball, and it turns into a jump ball. Villanova's got the possession arrow. So it's going to be Villanova ball with a second to go. I'm looking for the home run ball, and that takes the remaining time off the clock. So Villanova escapes with a huge win versus Xavier. Xavier falls to 12-5 and five in the conference, and they're now at least a game and a half, if not two games back from Marquette, um, who has a tiebreaker in the Big East Conference. So it looks like the Big East is going to get won by Marquette. Uh, the conference tournament at the end of the regular season, you got Xavier, Villanova, Seton Hall, UConn, Marquette, Providence, all teams that could legitimately win that tournament. And if you win that tournament, you get an automatic bid. So I would expect to see at least four teams from the Big East in the final in the March Madness final bracket. But if Xavier keeps losing these close games, they've lost three close games now in the last two weeks. Um, they could find themselves on the bubble or even slipping out of the tournament altogether. So the next thing we're going to take a look at the film for is this Tennessee at A&M matchup. Both teams are 20-7 and seven coming in. A&M with a bit of a better record in the conference right now. It's a really weird season for Tennessee. They moved all the way up to number two, and then they lost to two unranked teams, uh, Florida and Vandy. Um, they did lose to Vandy on a buzzer beater. They then went to Mizzou and dropped uh, another game uh, against Missouri. But then they beat number one, Alabama. And right before this game, they played Kentucky, and they were down 20 in that game, lost by 12. So they shoot it 32% from beyond the three-point line. Uh, free throw percentage is at 71%. They turn it over 12 times a game. They get 16 and a half assists per game and 39 and a half rebounds. For AM, they're coming in on a four-game win streak. Uh, they beat Auburn. They avenged an earlier loss in the season to Arkansas with a 62 to 56 win last week. And they beat Missouri on the road as well. They shoot it a little bit better from beyond the three-point line. They're at 33%, 76% from the free throw line, only 12 turnovers per game, only 13 assists and uh, 37 rebounds per game. They're led by uh, Wade Taylor, who's number four in black, and uh, Tyrese Radford, number 23 in black. Julius Marbles is their big man down low. He's number 34. He's a 6'9", 245-pound junior. So on this first possession, we're going to see really good defense from Texas A&M. Um, you can see they're switching early. They're switching everything, not just the ball screens. They're also switching this cutting action here. And that just keeps them in front. It keeps the ball away from the basket. They haven't gotten anything inside the three-point. Finally, Zakai Ziegler goes in, and he takes a tough look. Um, off two feet, just a little midi bunny jumper, but it doesn't go. And Marble down here comes away with a good rebound. Gets deflected right here by Jamai. Uh, that's a... Uh, Jemai Mashak, Vescovy right here, number 25, one of the best scorers in the conference. He does a lot of optioning off the three-point line. He gets in, he gets the ball on the three-point line, and then when the defenders close it out, he either pump fakes and goes around, he gives it up and gives a little dribble drive, pass and cut. He's got a lot of options off of his three-point line. But this time, it's Zakai Ziegler who's just going to rise up and take a big shot. I'm living with that shot if I'm te at Texas A&M. So on this a and possession, there's really not a lot going on. We don't dribble drive and penetrate. We don't really pass and cut to get any action going. It goes into Garcia right here to initiate the possession, get a little entry on the top. But it's good defense. They stay in front. Like I said, there's really no dribble drive action. Nothing really going on so far. We got 10 seconds on the clock, so we get a little ball screen action. Marble with a good spin move. He slips this ball screen right here and uh wade taylor is able to deliver him a pass in rhythm on the on the midline he gets one spin and a look at the hoop but good hands right here from zakai ziegler to knock it out and it ends up being off marble so tennessee's going to have the ball so this tennessee possession starts out with a bit of a double ball screen look here it's awaka and nakamwa right here oliver nakamwa is number 13 awaka right here number 11 but a has got it covered. They send, a, they send a hedge guy right at the ball, cuts it off, and uh, Dexter Dennis is able to get back on Ziegler. So now Nakamwa and Vescovy are trying to get this two-man game going. Nakamwa sets one for Vescovy. We get the ball into him. We not, got another ball screen. Nakamwa uh, slips. But again, a has got it covered. Garcia cuts off this dribble drive, and he forces Vescovy to go back left into Radford. And we got 14 seconds, and we're 45 feet from the hoop. Dexter Dennis is playing good defense on Zakai Ziegler right here. Stays in front, uses his feet, 
and he forces a tough look. Zico can't get it to go, and again, it's Marble down here with the rebound. And this is a really messy possession here from AM actually. Tennessee plays decent enough defense, and we got 20 seconds on the clock now. We got a one point lead. Really do need a bucket because Tennessee can go down the other end and get a quick score and take the lead. But Garcia's got it up top, and normally you're going to want, you know, Radford or Wade Taylor, your leading scorer, with the ball in their hands right now. We get it to Taylor, and he just is forced to take a tough look. Um, good rebound, good effort here from Dexter Dennis. He's able to make a play on the ball, off the rim. He gets a tip, and it goes right to Marble, who ends up getting fouled. So Marble knocks them both down, and now Tennessee's down three. a and going to bring the pressure, so Tennessee's forced to call a timeout. a and keeping the pressure a little bit, just not allowing anything easy. Again, we get a switch here on this drive. a and long. They have a lot of guys that can play multiple positions. Radford's on the ball now. Garcia's here, cutting off Vescovy. We do not want Vescovy to have the ball in his hands anywhere near the three-point line because he is the most dangerous man to tie the game right now. He goes into Kamwa, and Nakama rises up and takes a tough one on Garcia. Dribbles on the rim for a little bit, and it goes out of bounds off Tennessee. They're going to take a look at it. To me, it looks like it's off of uh, Jemai right here. Great rebound here from uh, that's Anderson Garcia. I would have to imagine that they're going to keep the ball in a and stick with the call on the court. Apparently that's not what happens. They give the ball to Tennessee with 20 on the clock. Again, we gotta have Vescovy nowhere near the three-point line. Ziegler gets it in deep off the inbound. So he's the inbound man. And he gets it in, he just comes right off this screen right here, curls it, and Marble does not foul. He doesn't get in a position to cut the ball off. Ziegler does a good job of going around the defender to put up a layup off the glass. And it's back down to a one-point game. Tennessee's going to have to foul. They bring the pressure. They got three up on two guys. Goes into Radford. It's a loose ball, though. Good timeout call. Still going to have to make an inbound play here against pressure from Tennessee. Ziegler's really good hands right here on this defensive possession. Goes into Radford again. Trap comes. Ziegler's here. He gets off of his feet. Radford does not what you want to do in this situation. Radford's got to be calm with the ball right here. He's got to know that the trap is coming. And he's just looking to get rid of it a little bit too quickly. He's out of control. He doesn't know what this guy's doing. If he's staying home on uh, Wade Taylor right here, if he's going to come guard Anderson Garcia. Radford leaves his feet. He's got two guys on him, and it gets deflected by Nakamura. I'm sorry, that's best to be right there. But Vescovy loses it to Wade Taylor, who makes a heads-up play and sees that his man's in trouble. Vescovy's now got the ball, but Wade Taylor pokes it out and takes it right back. Huge defensive play there from Wade Taylor. Forces Vescovy to foul. So Wade Taylor knocks down both from the line. Gives Texas A&M another three-point lead. They keep the pressure up. They don't want the ball to be advanced too easily for Tennessee. Try and waste as much time. Limit the amount of possessions that Tennessee's going to have. Limit the amount of things that they can do in these final couple seconds. So it looks like they're going to take one shot, and it's Sakai Ziegler one-on-one -on -one against Dexter Dennis. Dexter Dennis plays really good defense, and he gets a hand up in the shooting pocket of Sakai Ziegler. He forces this to be a real tough look, and Sakai Ziegler is not your first option. Your first option is Vescovy down here, and then I would honestly go to Nakamo before I go to Ziegler. Just because Dexter Dennis is much larger, Ziegler's a smaller offensive player, and he just doesn't create enough space to get a clean look. Rebound goes off of, ten off of a and M, off of Tennessee, apparently. So a and M is going to get the ball now. Tennessee either needs a quick turnover or a quick foul. And they get a quick foul on Taylor. Taylor can ice it right here, though, put him up by two possessions. Vescovy's had this conference on lock for a little bit, and now Wade Taylor, this look to Vescovy right here, it's a bit like passing the torch. A&M. I love that look from uh, Wade Taylor to Vescovy. A&M is going to take control of this conference. Kentucky's having it down here. Florida ain't there. It's Alabama and A&M at the top of the SEC now. Taylor hits them both. Ice is the game. And that's how that one ends. So our final game of the day is going to be this SEC matchup between Missouri and Mississippi State. These teams are both fighting now for fourth place in the SEC with Tennessee. 
Mississippi State won the first matchup these two teams had on February 4th. They won it 63-52. to uh, Missouri is coming in off of coming in off of lo that loss to AM and uh, also lost to Auburn and their win versus Tennessee. They shoot it 36% from behind the line, 75% from the free throw line. Mississippi, or I'm sorry, Missouri turns it over 11 and a half times per game. They have 16 and a half assists, so a pretty good assist to turnover ratio there. And they grab 30.8 rebounds per game. They're led by number 24 right here, Kobe Brown. Uh, he's a 6'8", 250-pound senior who scores the majority of their points. Meanwhile, Mississippi State is coming off an OT win versus Ole Miss. We're picking up this game in overtime as well. They lost to Kentucky previously uh, before the Ole Miss win. They lost to Kentucky by three points last week. And they also beat Arkansas on the road. So Mississippi State is fighting for a chance to get in the tournament, uh, looking at fourth or fifth place in the SEC. And Missouri is in the same boat. They got almost the same record, almost the same record in the conference as well. Mississippi State does not shoot it very well at all. They shoot it 28% from behind the line, only 64% as a group from the free throw line, 12 and a half turnovers per game, and only 14 and a half assists per game. They do grab 37 rebounds, and they're led by Tolu Smith, who is number one. He's a 6'11", 245-pound forward. They also have Shaq Moore, who's number three, and Deshaun Davis, number 10, in black right here, who are their main guys who get most of their touches. For Missouri, though, we're going to see Nick Honor, number 10 in white, have a pretty big impact on this game here late. So like I said, we're picking this one up in overtime. Very competitive basketball game between these two teams. And this one starts with Nick Honor getting an entry pass to Kobe Brown right here in the high post. And then he's going to go and screen uh, Damani Hodges, man, Demoy Hodges, man, number five right here. But Hodges just sets another one on Honor's own guy, and that frees up a free look for Honor. So it's just screen away, and then have the screener set one on the shooter, and Honor gets a good look at three, and he drills it. So Missouri takes a three-point lead at home. Their bench is loving it. The crowd's loving it. Mississippi State's going to come down, though, and pretty much answer right back. Uh, it starts off with Deshaun Davis right here going off his ball screen from Cam Matthews. But, again, we're leaving our feet to pass. Never a good idea to uh, be this high in the air and be this out of control trying to make this pass. Eric Green Jr. gets it on the wing, though. Um, gives a little pump fake, gets Nick Honor off of his feet. So he uses the dribble drive to go around, but it's cut off right here, number 35. Uh, Missouri is positioned really well defensively at this point, and they cut off the dribble drive. So it goes back out to Cam Matthews, who uh, Missouri's in this sort of zone look. They're playing good D. It's a bit of a 1-3-1 look right here. We got Kobe Brown underneath. Noah Carter, number 35, in the middle. Cam Matthews is going to go towards Tolu Smith a little bit, but he sees the cutting Jeffries. So he's going to dribble left and go at Jeffries and just kick it right out to him. And that's the answer I was talking about. Jeffries hits it, and we're tied at 60 now. So Missouri's coming down, and we're going to get another entry to Kobe Brown right here. And it's a double screen look right here, but Kobe's pretty much just waiting for someone to do something. He gets it to Noah Carter, number 35. And he's got nowhere to go. Mississippi State's playing good enough defense to keep the ball out of the three-point line. Keep it away from the rim. Playing good enough ball pressure. Playing good enough off ball in the lane. Uh, you can see Nick Honor really wants a screen from Kobe Brown. He tells him to come up, get the screen. There's only 10 on the clock. But Noah Carter comes and sets it first. And now Nick Honor's got to kind of make a play out of a crappy possession here for Missouri. And he does a good job. He goes one-on-one -on -one against the 6'11", Tolu Smith. It's going to be a tough matchup for Nick Honor, but he gets him going other ways, changes direction a whole lot, just can't execute and get the uh, layup to go. But Demoy Demani Hodge gets a steal in transition, uh, just being careless with the ball right here. And Hodge is able to come up with a steal. But look at Deshaun Davis right here. Watch number 10 get back on defense. That's an all-out dead sprint. And because of that, he makes a play on the ball and saves a layup. Keeps the game tied as well. Check out this all-out sprint from Deshaun Davis. Great hustle right here to get back and get a good hand on the ball and come away with a steal. Gets kicked out of bounds by Kobe Brown. So Mississippi State's going to have it. They got two bigs in the game, so they go man up. They're going to go man look here. And we're really trying to get the ball to Tolu Smith. He's being guarded by the guy that just checked into the game. So Deshaun Davis is taking the ball away from Tolu Smith's side. Uh, 
Jeffries kicks out, and Tolu Smith just cuts right at the ball. Jeffries delivers a great bounce pass here, and Tolu Smith, he keeps him sealed. And he gives up an easy look there. So Mississippi State's going to take the lead back on that, on that layup. It's been 12 ties in this game so far. So this possession is really uh, Kobe Brown and Tolu Smith are going to go one-on-one. -on -one. This switch happens right here on that ball screen, and now it's the two best players on the court. Mano y Mano, again, I'm going to say that again in this video, Mano y Mano. But Brown can't get it to go. Um, we get an offensive rebound, though. Ball's back in Brown's hands. He's still got Smith guarding, and we get a, a, a screen here. And this time, Eric Reed is going to play good defense. He does a great job of moving his feet to stay in front of Kobe Brown. He gets his hands in the ball. He makes a play on the ball. He gets a loose ball. And then here comes Cam Thomas, or Cam Matthews, I'm sorry, to come over and help out and make a block. You'll see that Cam Thomas, or dang, Cam Matthews is going to be helping off of number 45 right here. And Kobe Brown's ball hogging a little bit right now, and he gets stuffed. So it turns into a transition look for Mississippi State, but they end up pulling out of it. And we got a mismatch down low. So it goes into Smith, who's being guarded by Hodge. And Deshaun Davis does the right thing by... Having his man uh, go to double this, he cuts and fills the open space. But Nick Honor does a good job getting into his back and just making Deshaun Davis think about him, getting him to feel him on his back a little bit. And then it's Demoy Demani Hodge right here helping off of Tolu Smith. Look how quick he gets to the ball and affects this shot from here from Deshaun Davis. Hodge jumps right off the ball, and he makes a play on it. Turns into a transition look for Missouri now. Um... Hodges got it, and it goes back into Gamillion, Gamillion um, who goes one-on-one -on -one versus Cam Matthews. He can't get it to go, though. So this one getting a bit scrappy here late. A lot of one-and-done looks here for both of these two teams. We're in man again here. Um, we're wasting a lot of time. This this possession actually gets cut off. It's just a 1v1 right here, a, a ball screen with Tolu Smith and Deshaun Davis. But like I said, for some reason, we don't get to see how the possession finishes. Um, it just kind of like cuts here, and then you'll see the score does not change, and we get about 10 seconds off the clock, so this just ends up being an empty possession for Mississippi State. Again, I don't know why the video doesn't show it, but it doesn't, so Kobe Brown actually gets knocked out of the game with a bloody nose. Um, like I said, the score hasn't changed, and we just go on to the next possession, so it's Missouri ball now. Like I said, Kobe's out with the bloody nose, so it's like, who do they look to now? Um, Nick Honors had the hot hand, but we're going to get try and get Demoy Hodge coming off the down screen. No Carter kind of gets sick of waiting for him and just pops out and decides, hey, I'm going to shoot this one. You can see how long Demoy Hodge is trying to get open. Deshaun Davis, is he's uh, cheating it a little bit. He's playing really good defense. So Hodge actually ends up hitting Smith's guy. Or, Hodge actually ends up hitting Smith, and Deshaun Davis is out there to affect the shot, but no Carter rises up and hits it. Not something you'd really expect out of, uh, out of him. I don't think he's shooting very well this year, but he gets that one to go and gives Missouri a lead late. So, with Kobe Brown out and uh, number 45 also out, if we go back to the small ball look, so we're in a 1-3-1 one zone here, and uh, we're looking into Tolu the whole time, or I'm sorry, Tolu's got it. But we're still trying to get it to him. Um, just can't really get anything going. Ends up being a timeout. That allows Kobe Brown actually to check back into the game. So he's going to be in for the rest of the, one, the rest of the game on this possession. And uh, Mississippi State needs a bucket here. It's just a ball screen right here. And Deshaun Davis gets in the lane. He loses the ball and coughs it up to Noah Carter. Puts it right in his chest. But Carter can't hold on to it, and Davis gets it back and gets the roll to go. We'll just see that one more time in real speed. All it is is six seconds on the shot clock, and Davis has come to the lane. He coughs it up, but he gets it back, and he gets the roll to go. Really intense, crazy game here late. So Mississippi State leads by one. Missouri's going to have a shot to win it. We got a ball screen for Nick Honor, and the switch comes. So Honor's being guarded by Smith, and I love this shot. It's just a step back right in the face of Tolu Smith, and that's going to be your game winner, folks, because Mississippi State's not going to be able to get a bucket on the other end. But late in the game like this, you're no, you know, you're not, you have options here for Nick Honor. You could 
swing it to Kobe Brown, put the ball in the, your best player's hand, which obviously is not a bad thing to do. You could, now that you have the switch on Tilda Smith, you could try and use your size, your, use your speed advantage possibly to go around. But Nick Honor's not a skinny dude. He's not that quick off the dribble. He's definitely more skilled as a shooter than a driver. And he plays to his strengths. He gets Tolu Smith off balance thinking that, you know, Tolu Smith, I'm a bigger defender. I got to make sure that this guy doesn't get around me. It's a one-point game. He's probably not thinking that Nick Honor's going to have the nuts to hit a step back three in the face like that. But Honor rises up and he smacks it. And it's a huge shot there for Nick Honor. And like I said, it ends up being the game winner. Because Mississippi State comes down here on the other end. And this crazy game finishes in a crazy way. Deshaun Davis has a tough look off one foot. Ball's dribbling around. And that's how it ends. They, they don't get a foul call. They don't get a shot up before the buzzer. It's just one look, tipped around, and then the clock expires. And I was watching this one live. I actually thought that this ref right here had a foul call. But that's not how it ends. So Missouri escapes with a win. And now, like I said, they're trying to get that four seed in the SEC. So... I know we only looked at two conferences today, the Big 12 and the SEC, but those are, to me, the best two conferences in college basketball right now. Um, the bracket will be coming out in uh, about maybe a month or so. Um, when that time does occur, I will be doing a bracket. Obviously, I'll be doing a couple brackets, but I will be doing an episode uh, on my bracket, going over the matchups and seeing who I think is going to take it all this year. So, again, thanks for tuning in to Coach Cole's b -Wall Breakdowns. Another film review session in the books. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're seeing how guys are getting their shots and whatnot. So yeah, just stay tuned. There's definitely more coming and thanks for watching.